I am a blockchain developer. I'm a front end developer and in real life I'm a pharmacist to death. So I'm a gym babe. I tell people I'm Aziza and I'm a blockchain developer and they're, they're like, wow, blockchain developer? That's surprising. You don't see a lot of female blockchain developers, especially up here in the north. I've once gone to a blockchain event and someone said, is there any blockchain developers here? And I raised up my hand and then he was like, really? I'll give you something after. And at the end of the event, he gave me money. When a lot of people hear blockchain, when a lot of people hear crypto, they think, oh, it's complex. Nigeria is still a little more, for lack of better words, paper and pen society, but still very manual. Zan aims to take out that complexity. Basically, you don't even need a wallet address to own currency in Zion. I started it because I was bored. A lot of people that learned are self-taught. So when you're self-taught, you have to be disciplined. You have to be committed. I had a test every single day for the last one week. I have another test next week, Monday, on Tuesday, and on Wednesday. Am I losing my mind? Yes, I'm losing my mind. At night, I cry myself to bed wondering, oh, why am I even doing all of this? Is it really worth it in the end? This stress, how long are you going to keep making excuses for? One piece of the advice that I would give everybody. Hi, hello. Hello, hi. What is your name, please? My name is Abdul Kadir Aziza. Abdul Kadir? Yes. Oh, wow. My name is Abdul Kadir Aziz. Beautiful. Oh, surprising. Oh, wow. What a coincidence. Please. Uh, sorry, what do you do? Well, I am a blockchain developer. I'm a front end developer. And in real life, I'm a pharmacist to death. Wow. Also, I also go to the gym in my free time. I'm a gym babe, basically. Wow. I don't see a lot of female devs. <laughs> How it this. This field here, yeah, it's like uh, a male-dominated uh, space. How do you navigate and how do you cope with this? So, um, honestly speaking, yeah, the space has been very, very accommodating for me, actually, because I see, I tell people, oh, I am Aziza and I'm a blockchain developer. And they're, they're like, wow, blockchain developer? That's surprising. You don't see a lot of female blockchain developer, especially up here in the north. Like we have more down south or up here in the north, so there's not a lot of them. And um, also, when it comes to being in a male dominated space, it's actually very, very nice because I've once gone to a blockchain event and someone said, Is there any blockchain developers here? And I raised up my hand and then he was like, Really? I'll give you something after. And at the end of the event, he, he gave me money and then he was like, Keep doing what you're doing. Keep, keep, I'm so proud to see, and it felt so nice. So, generally speaking, the space has been very accommodating. I won't lie. Mm. Alhamdulillah, very, very good so far. Well, beautiful. Um, we are here for Zion today, uh, an event that you are uh, organizing. Yes. Uh, what is Zion, and why should we care? Mm. So, Zion is an L1 ecosystem. Now, basically, when a lot of people hear blockchain, when a lot of people hear crypto, they think, oh, it's complex. It's, um, you know, you have things like seed phrases, you have wallet address, you have this, you have that. And because as much as we, we think, we like to think, oh, we're tech dominated, Nigeria is still a little more, for lack of better words, paper and pen society, but still very manual. So when you come, when you, when you know, not only bring tech, but then you bring blockchain, you bring stuff where there's money involved. If in, if they have a wallet address, if one number is missing, their money is gone, all of that, all of that complexity. So with Zion, Zion aims to take out that complexity. Basically, you don't even need a wallet address to own, um, what's it called, to own um, currency in Zion. You don't, you don't need all of those seed phrases. And with your email, just your email, we, we like to think almost everybody has an email these days. So with just your email, you're good. You can have, you can trade with Zion. And also another thing is usually because I when when I do development blockchain development where you have to use things like testnet coins you have to go to your faucet and get all of that and then sometimes you have to do transfer from MetaMax from one wallet to the other basically you have to do it between MetaMax Trust Bybit all of that so with Zion you can do all of that in Zion you don't have to transfer from one currency to the other if you say for example now where there was this hackathon I participated in and I won some money but it was in Kin in a currency called Kin so Kin is not tradable but 
kin is tudja bút Solana. So I had first send kin, convert kin to Solana, convert Solana to USDT, <laughs> convert USDT to Nera. So that was like four steps just to get money. And then at the end of the day, by the time you're done with all of that, because of gas fees and all of that, so your the the amount of money you get is reduced at the end of the day. So with Zion, Zion's plans to take all of that, all your transaction is on Zion. You trade with Zion. You do everything you need on Zion with Zion. So basically, that's how that's basically Zion is making blockchain abstractless. Oh, well, they simplify uh, blockchain. Yes, basically. Beautiful. Um, I I would think that getting into the space and starting you you had some problems when you were starting out can you highlight a couple of them okay so what were the challenges i faced so when i started i started it because i was bored i was i started tech basically because i was bored and discipline and commitment is the biggest challenge because there's really it's not that tech hubs are offering courses there's really no a lot of people that learn are self-taught so when you're self-taught, you have to be disciplined. You have to be committed because the same you and somebody that has put in eight hours of work are going to be applying for the same jobs. So you have to put in the work regardless. Nobody's going to tell you, oh, Aziza, you need to code for two hours today. You have to tell yourself to code for two hours because the thing with coding is you can only get better by doing. Okay, so there's this popular example I like to, uh, I like to you know, mention. There was this... Um, there was this project I was building one time. And I noticed that I was done for the day. I turned off my laptop. I went to bed. I came back the following day for me to, you know, run my um, development environment. Next thing, it was showing me errors. Errors that weren't there the previous day. And I remember I spent over 48 hours trying to debug that error. I spoke to my friends. I, I even made a tweet on Twitter. I, you know, it was a whole lot. And then at the end of the day, it turns out that I had left the directory. So instead of the only the, the only solution was that I needed to press CD. Change directory. Change directory. That was the only solution. It took me 48 hours. So those kind of things, you don't learn it in tutorial. You have to learn it by experience. Now, if I see that error, immediately I know how to solve it. But unless you do, unless you practice, you are not going to know. And there's this popular saying I live by, what you see, you know. What you hear, you remember. But what you do, you never ever forget. So the only way to get better is by practice. The only way to get better is by practice. So mm -hmm. oh, I live that every single day. <laughs> I would like to believe that there is someone watching and they've been pro procrastinating. Yes, you, I'm talking to you. Yeah. You've been procrastinating. You have that idea. You have you want to start this thing, whether be it whatever skill it is. What ad what advice do you have for that person? Coming from a terrible procrastinator myself, there's this thing my boss always says, luck is opportunity meets preparation. Luck is preparation meets opportunity. You cannot get lucky without putting in the work. So if you're procrastinating, you're not going to get lucky. And you cannot be unlucky for 365 days at a row. So one day, one day, it's all going to come together. So yes, one piece of advice that I would give everybody is put in the work, regardless of it be tech, it be the gym, it be school. Because I'm also a pharmacy student and I try to balance it, all of it. So put in the work. It's going to pay off. That's one thing that I show. It will pay off. But for it to pay off, you have to put in the work. Yeah, uh, well, uh, absolutely. I, I, I do believe that too. Because um, speaking about luck, I, I, this, I do say this all the time. It's like, I believe in getting lucky. I believe that I've been lucky so many times. So, um, for you, but for you to get lucky, you have to increase the odds of being lucky. So you have to show up every single time. So every single time you show up, it's just like, it's like playing. It's like a casino. Yeah. It's like, it's like a gamble, but you have to increase your odds every single time. Every single time you show up, you increase your odds. Being a student myself, yeah, I know how difficult it is, you know, with all the school activities, classes and all that. And then you're a developer too, which is crazy. How do you navigate this? How do you manage? I'd also like to add, it's pharmacy school. 
you can imagine. So today is Saturday. I had a test every single day for the last one week. I have another test next week, Monday, on Tuesday, and on Wednesday. So that's just to, you know, put into context the crazy workload I have. But, you know, like I said, if you're determined to have something, you're just going to go ahead and do it because how long are you going to keep making excuses for? Am I losing my mind? Yes, I'm losing my mind. At night, I cry myself to bed wondering, oh, why am I even doing all of this? Is it really worth it in the end? This stress. There was one time I remember I fell asleep on the floor because I was too tired to go to my bed. That's how exhausted I get on some days. But then when it comes to balancing, time management is key. Even though I'm still struggling with that, I won't lie. But time management is key. And then you have to pick your struggles. I am not an advocate for bunking classes, but I bunk some classes because I know I would not learn anything in this class. So I'd rather stay home and work or stay home and study or even stay home and sleep. Because as much as, as crazy as my schedule is, I still get eight hours of sleep daily. Every day I sleep for eight hours. Because if I don't get eight hours of sleep, I have history with terrible migraine. All of this, all of this gist basically is to tell you that you just have to find what works for you. I have found that, that reading at night does not work for me. So I read during the day and I sleep at night. I have people that they don't sleep at night, they read. If I read anything at night and I don't sleep, it's pointless. Because I won't know anything. So I work when I can. I gym when I can. I cook when I can. I eat when I can. Basically, I do what I can when I can. Making sure that I maximize my potential. I'm putting in all the effort as much as I can for the end of the day. Oh, beautiful. I, I would like to add something, you know. Um, I, I agree with you 100%. I, I, I love my sleep. So I, I actually actively invest in my sleep. Yeah. You know how? I... My work, I'm not even going to talk about school. Well, my work, I, I try to do every single thing from eight till one. That is, I'm, after that, I'm not doing any work. So and I, I, I may do school, school activities and visiting friends and after, you know, two and all that. But at night, I, I, after I shy, I just zone out. I, I like to sleep. I, I just, yeah, I sleep, just go to. Sleeping is very important. <laughs> um, a friend was making jest of me two days ago, just two days ago. And then I had a test to prepare for, but I went to bed. And then he called me by one and then he was like, are you asleep? And I was like, yes. And then he was like, don't you have jurisprudence? That's pharmacy law. And then I was like, yes, I do. Make I no sleep. And then he was like, are you going to sleep? And he was like, I was like, yes. Oh, me, I love to sleep. And then he was like, yes, you're a superwoman with all the things you combine. But every superhero has his flaws and yours is sleep. Oh my goodness, I can sleep. I would, regardless of what I'm doing, because it's time to sleep, I will sleep, please. Every other thing can wait. As much as I advocate that, oh, you have to work, you have to put in the work, you have to put in all your effort. Work would be there whether or not you're fine or not. So take care of yourself, take care of your health, eat well, sleep well, do all the things you need to do, but put yourself first regardless. Money is not worth compromising your health for. Thank you very much, Aziza. It was, it was really lovely doing this. It was so nice. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Already beautiful. Um, Aziza is with Aziz. <laughs> and it's fascinating, you know. Uh, her name is, uh, I, I, her name is Abdul, uh, Abdul Qadir Aziza. And my name is Abdul Qadir Aziz. Huh? What huh? a coincidence. Huh? Huh? <laughs> I, look so, I look forward to working with you. Oh, me too. I look forward. I, I cannot wait to see what we're going to put together. Alrighty. Watch out for Aziz. Uh, and Aziza. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty.